Finally, we have a bit of sunshine, although as I'm saying that the sun has actually gone behind a cloud, but that's probably an advantage because I'm facing where it should be and I'll be like that while I'm recording. So I'm gonna take the, take the brief moment that it's behind a cloud to film this bit. So this is the pond on plot 37. It's basically a circle, although not very exact. It gets shallow towards the edge and at the far side, there is a shelf where the marsh marigold is growing. So it's basically this shape. And we put the shelf in fairly recently. So the pond, like I say, is about a meter deep, but it used to be just a bowl shape. And a couple of years ago, well, 2018, we decided to do a bit of work on it because it had got completely clogged with uh, soil. It was really muddy at the bottom by a good, you know, 40 centimeters or so, or even more. And it had a huge mass of plants growing in the corner that were completely immovable and taking up most of the space. Oh, here comes the sun. So originally when we dug it out uh, we had a lot of excess like old carpet left on our plot um, like I seem to see a lot of people have but we ended up using quite a lot of it to line the pond after we'd dug it out as an extra layer of protection for the pond liner and we've got a woven matting pond liner so the carpet has protected it pretty well um, over the years we have had one leak in an earlier vlog so it would have been sort of uh, mid 2020 I'd say um, I plugged one of the holes with uh, silicon sealant for guttering that seemed to work absolutely fine but that's the only hole we've had so I think the carpet uh, did a good job in this case we ended up putting the shelf in a bit later, like I said, uh, when we rearranged the whole lot. So the front section of the pond is just grass going straight in. And uh, a few years ago, it was it was rockery all the way around. But we decided to take out a section and we used those stones to kind of move around. And in that time, that's when we were digging out a lot of the stuff that was in there and hauling that out of the pond. And boy, was that a job. But at the same time, we lifted back the pond liner and the carpet and, and rammed soil down underneath and kind of molded a new shelf under there and then laid the pond liner back down over the top of it to give herself a bit of a shelf because when it was just a complete bowl, uh, it was very difficult to lodge any plants anywhere and things like that marsh marigold that's in that corner really needed something to sit on. So that's what that's sitting on in that corner. But other than that, it is just slopey sides. Where that shelf is, I also laid quite a lot of rockery going into the pond to allow anything to get out that needed to, which is something that we didn't have before. So like I said in last week's vlog, um, I am not a pond expert in any way, shape or form. And most of the things that we've got in here have been given to us from other people's ponds over the years. And so it's never been a case of really knowing what anything is exactly. I mean, I know kind of roughly or common names or whatever, but I don't really know a great deal about them. So I have been doing quite a lot of research about everything that's in the pond mainly the plants, but also uh, the point of having the pond here is to be a wildlife pond. And so I've been having a bit of an investigate about what I can find in there as well. I'm gonna talk about the plants that are growing in the pond, under the surface of the water and on top, and also the plants that we've got surrounding the pond, because they are also part of the kind of wildlife area that we're trying to create. Like I say, most of them are hand-me-downs, and there's only one that we specifically went out and found to have in the pond and that is of course the water lily i absolutely adore this water lily it's so exciting every time it buds up with these beautiful big buds you can see there's another one coming under here 
it is gorgeous. We only put it in like this time last year. So this was when we were launching it, <laughs> April last year. And you can see from this bit of footage that we had quite a lot of goldfish at the time. Uh, not goldfish we had ever put in there, they just sort of magically appeared. And um, But we don't have a single goldfish left anymore because the heron discovered the pond. You can see them all swimming around there. You see how small the water lily was just a year ago. It has grown incredibly well. But yeah, no more fish, uh, but that's actually quite a positive thing in terms of biodiversity in the pond. But this is what it looks like now. It just looks so happy. Look how beautiful the underside of these leaves are. Is that not gorgeous? I just love this plant so much. Another real favourite is this Butomis. It's a flowering rush and it's just gorgeous. There's just no two ways about it. Again, pink, we've got a bit of a theme going on, but it's this just magnificent stem with these beautiful umbral flowers and uh, it's just always covered in buzzing life. is sitting on that shelf that we created fairly recently and it's a really lovely bushy and shrubby plant and it's normally got these fantastic yellow flowers at the moment it's just got seed pods uh, because it flowers earlier in the year covered in yellow flowers and it's a real joy so I've said before in my vlogs and plot tours and things how much I just love staring into this pond and I'm hoping to get across some of that in this video just just the looking and watching things I just love it so much so the other plant that I want to talk about is this mare's tail this is new this year for us and it is a beauty so it's a deep water oxygenator so its leaves kind of peter out as it goes underwater and it's got these rhizomes which really embed into the mud and it just grows up through everything else I think it's gorgeous. Like a lot of the things in this pond, the flag irises and stuff, it, it can be invasive, so you just got to keep on top of it. But it's not difficult to pull out.
So as well as the plants on top of the water, we have got two different types of oxygenating plants. We've got hornwort and elodia. So this is the hornwort under here and it's always covered in snails. In fact, the piece I've just pulled out has got a snail on it. Snail and what I believe to be snail's eggs, correct me if I'm wrong, water snail's eggs, obviously not normal snails. But yeah, so we've got a lot of that. And then this is the other one, fairly standard. You buy this one with little metal clips around it and it just floats in the water. As well as the oxygenating plants, we do have uh, some problem plants in there. We've got quite a lot of this giant duckweed. So a few years ago, we used to have loads of just normal duckweed. You know, it's just smaller than this, but this stuff has got these massive roots on it. Um, yeah, so I don't know where the swap over came, but you know, these ones look like little tiny squid. And as you touch them, like you just saw, as you touch them like, and they break apart, you just get two of them. So we do have to do quite a lot of scooping of this out in the height of summer when it's multiplying quite quickly. The same goes for the other problem we've got, which is the blanket weed. So this just looks like sort of green hair in the pond. And we have to fish this out really quite often. You've probably seen me do it in the vlogs. So it just is an algae and it is like string and it wraps itself around absolutely everything. And as it gets more and more, it kind of forms these bubbly surface places. But when we're scooping it out, we always stick it on a rock nearby. We wouldn't just like take it away or put it in a bag or something because there's always things living in there and you want to give them a chance to kind of crawl out and get back into the pond. So yeah, I do a lot of scooping. In fact, you can see, look on this one, there's a little baby newt. And a water beetle. So as well as the plants in the pond, we've also been kind of planting up the area around it because we've set this whole area aside to be sort of a wildlife garden. And the first thing we really got in was a gunnera. Now gunneras are normally massive, uh, but this one took a real hard knock during the last really cold winter we had because it hasn't got itself established yet. But you can see there these beautiful sort of like dinosaur leaves, they're wonderful and they can get massive. So maybe one day this one will be really big, but at the moment it is having to compete with some comfrey, which I need to take out. So hopefully once I've got that cleared, the gunnera will really take off and provide a bit of shade for the pond. That's what we're after. Something I haven't yet done is um, earlier, about a couple of months ago, I made this kind of structure at the back of the pond because we want to get something big and evergreen growing up the back here as habitat for birds and anything else that wants to live there. But I haven't made a decision on what we're gonna plant there yet. So it's currently still there. We've got a big focus on planting plants specifically that pollinators really enjoy. And what we've done is around the back of the pond, we've planted quite a lot of perennials so that there doesn't need to be any disturbance and it's the front of the pond where we're putting the annual stuff and the meadow seed. So last year I completely fell in love with this toad flax. I just thought it was incredible and the seed came from a company called Pictorial Meadows. I was really keen to, to repeat this again this year but I bought the same seed and it really hasn't performed the same so I'm going to make my own mix next year from the various bits and pieces that I saved. So this is this year's there is still some toad flax in it and it does look lovely, so I will save the seed from it. But just not as impressive as it was last year. Not only the number of plants, but just the mix of it just doesn't, doesn't feel as exciting as uh, last year. And a lot of this stuff is self-seeded from stuff we've already got on the allotment. So next year I'm going to make my own mix and all this front section is going to be wildflowers again. Because then that, that's being disturbed more than what's at the back of the pond. We want the back of the pond to just be completely left for whoever needs to make their home to make their home behind there. That's things like these oxide daisies that we grew from seed this year, which was nice. We've got this red currant in here, which is a bit of a sacrificial red currant for the birds. As you can see, it's now just a, a mono currant because um, they've had everything except for this one. But that's what we expected. <laughs> There's a couple of volunteer sunflowers in here that have been slugged. 
And I've also got a massive buddleia, which we've been cutting down every year and it produces loads of beautiful fresh growth each year. But uh, it provides a bit of privacy because we're against the edge of a school here. So it's doing its job perfectly. Another thing that I that is a permanent plant around the edge of this pond that I absolutely love are these leucanthemum. They are just gorgeous, really, really robust plants and there's always bugs on it. In fact, the bugs are multiplying in front of our eyes. That looks just like an earthworm to me. But there's no earth, so I guess a waterworm. The whole pond surface is just moving with various creatures. <laughs> there are so many things in here. That's really changed since the fish disappeared because we had very little when we had the fish. Okay, can you see two eyes looking at you? There's a frog. And... <laughs> It's a frog on a water lily. Can't get more pondish than that, can you? <laughs> We've also got the most enormous number of snails in this pond, like just masses of them. Not sure what this one's doing. They often float on their backs, so with the shell underneath and their is it their tummies? Do snails have tummies? Well, their tummies on the surface of the water and swim upside down, which is what this one is doing right now. Okay, I've just spotted something behind it that absolutely fills me with fear. So water boatmen really creep me out. It's that chap, it's the, the bigger one behind. It's like if Jaws had a baby with Sharon the Ferryman. I mean, whew.
And that's the pond. I will see you in Essex on Tuesday. <laughs>